This time I have a memory matching game. So you've probably seen this before, you try to match the tiles together. If they match, then they stay up. If I match here, those do not match, so they go back down. Those do match, so they stay up. So you can see how many turns you've taken in total, and however many matches you've made. That's your score. You try to match all of the tiles and get them all revealed in as few moves as possible. So I'm going to show you how to make this, so let's go! Okay, first we want to add a tile map. Make a new tile set. Click on it. I've loaded my texture. Let's drag that in. Say yes, we want to create tiles. Make sure to configure the sizes correctly. We can go ahead and save this tile set here. The separation, we want that to be 8 for this specific one. And the Y coordinate should be 30. Same up here. Next, let's attach a script to this. First, let's set up some constants. First, we want the board size. This is how large the board is in the X and Y dimension. An enum for the layers, whether a card is hidden or revealed. And also the source num. This refers to the atlas down here. When you hover over, it says source 0. So if I had another tile set loaded in, that one would probably be a source 1. Next, we want to have the hidden tile coordinates. This is inside the tile map. I'm going to use position 6, 2. This tile here. This is a circle, but as you might have seen, I do not have a white background, so let's create. So in the Tile Set tab, in Setup, right-click on the one that you want to have on the back face. I'm going to make an alternative. Next, go to the Select tab, click on that Alt, then click on the Modulate. I'll go for this color here. Next, we want a variable for which Alt this is. So you can see this is Alternative 1, so we don't want to have magic numbers in our program, so we use variable for this. Next, we want to track the spots that the player has revealed, 0, 1, or 2 cards. Next, we want to track where each card is in the board, so even when it's face down, we want to know where each one is located. We take a position and map it to the position in the atlas here at the bottom, in the texture. And then we can track the score and the number of turns taken by the player. Next, let's make a function to choose which cards from our atlas we want to use. So we have all these available, but that's way more than the 16 cards that we need. We're going to just choose a few of these. For my game, I'm just going to use this middle row here to make things simple. So I don't have a card with this on the face, for example. So we're going to have an array of 0 through 9. That's what range creates. And we shuffle it. Now, whatever our board size was at the top, we want to have 8 unique cards because 4 times 4 is 16. But there's two copies of each card, so we have eight of each. So we multiply those here and divide by two. We're choosing whatever was at the end of the options list. And then in my specific case, we have all of these on Y coordinate one. So that's why we have a one here. So this is choosing a card from this row. Next, we're going to have two copies of each card. So that's why we add it to the list twice. And with the way that we're doing this, then when we placed in all the cards, they'd be next to each other. So we want to shuffle this list again. So we'll shuffle it and then we return that from this function. So now we have a way to choose the cards. Let's set up the board using those cards. Now we want to be able to place all these cards face down, but we're going to use this later, so let's make a function for that as well. So we set the cell. Remember the arguments that this takes? A layer, then the coordinates that we want to place down card at, and source ID. Remember this is which atlas we're using, which texture at the bottom here. This is the face down tile coordinates that we made earlier, and the alt version of it. That's the colored version here. Okay, that's all we need in that function. So back inside of setup board, now we want to go through each spot in our board and place down a face down card. So on a separate layer, we're going to set the cell at that spot to be whatever card we're currently placing down. So we're going to place this on the revealed layer. Let's go ahead and set that up. So with your tile map selected, minimize the tile set section. Let's name our first layer hidden and add another layer here. We'll call this one revealed. Next at the bottom, let's add an underscore input function. This is a built-in function that'll be called when we give any input. This will tell us where we clicked in the global space, but in the local space of just this scene, we want to know where we clicked there. We convert this to vector2 because this gives us a vector2i and that conflicts with what we have in other places. Next, we want to know the alternative of our current tile. So is this tile actually hidden? So if this is a hidden tile and we have currently not revealed more than two spots, then we can set this cell on the hidden layer to no longer there. We're deleting the hidden card and it, underneath is going to be the revealed version. And since they just revealed the spot, let's add that to our list of spots that they have revealed. Now let's add the logic for when they have revealed a total of two cards. We check as the first card they revealed, is that equal to the second card they revealed? 
If it has, then that's good. We should add one to their score, and then say they have no more cards that we should turn back face down. But if those cards they revealed did not match, then let's put back those cards. So we don't want to do that immediately. We want them to be able to see what they revealed. So we'll wait for 1.5 seconds. That'll give them time to see, oh, I revealed a smiley face and a cloud compared to just revealing the smiley face and then putting back both cards before they get to see the second one. So we're just going to set each of the spots that they've revealed back to be face down. That means they no longer have any spots revealed. So let's clear that list. We want to update the text on the side of the game. So let's add a function for that, and let's put that up here along with adding one to the number of turns that they've taken, as whether they got it wrong or right, that's still turn. Now back inside of our input section, after we've added the revealed card, let's check if they revealed two cards total. If they have, let's call that function we just made. Now at the top in our ready function, let's set up the board and update the text when the game initially starts. Let's also add these labels to our game. So let's make a new scene. This will be our main scene. We can just name it that. Add a camera. Then here's a trick. Once you have main selected, you can click here to show everything else that you have available. Let's save this main scene here. Now let's also attach a canvas layer. Let's attach a normal label. Rename this to score label. I will make the vertical alignment be center. The anchor preset I will set to center right. Let's adjust our scene here. So the camera, I'm going to move that over with W. We can adjust the font size on our score label. I will set mine to be 40. Then we can press Q to adjust the sizes here. I will make mine about this size. If you want to preview how the text will look, once we have that done, we can duplicate our score label. With Control D, we can rename this to Turns Label. Drag that one a little bit by pressing W, and then you can drag it down. When asked if you want to run the game, you can select Current. You might notice that the game is a little small and our things are all revealed. Let's fix that. First, let's fix the sizing. Scroll down your tile map selected. I make the size 4.4, then drag it out a little bit from the side. This will be the upper left tile here when you start the game. To fix the cards being revealed, go to the tile set. The Z index on your revealed, you can make that 5. There we go. Now, if we play two cards, but if two cards do match, then they stay. So that's how you can make a card matching game in Godot. Thanks for watching.